Welcome to EPG Path Shala. I am Dr. Neeru Tandon, Department of English, VSSG College, Kanpur. We are discussing paper on linguistics and this module number 20, X bar theory has been written by Mr. Abhijit Debnath, research scholar of Hyderabad University. What is X bar theory? The name sounds bizarre. Eh? We are just curious to know what is this X bar theory and what it is doing with linguistics. So, resolving a structural representation, complex relationships between the various grammatical categories in a sentence, complex links and associations between several nodes in a phrase, clause or a sentence, a proper and precise representation of the relations between each word of a phrase, clause or sentence, we are concerned with X bar theory. Now, what is the phrase structure? Phrase structure rules, S is for sentence where we have NP and VP both. Then NP we have determiner noun. In the same way on your screen you can see that an approach to understand the grouping of words into phrases, clauses and sentences is shown. A structural representation of the complex relationships between the various grammatical categories in a language that combine in a sequence to form a phrase, clause or a sentence has been developing since transformational generative grammar that is popularly known as TGG as a part of mainstream generative grammar that is known as MGG. But a proper and precise relational representation was prepared in Chomsky's work to highlight and clarify at some symbolic representation the complex links between each word of a sentence existing directly or indirectly. There is a term X bar schema S C H E M A. What's it? It allows formulation of several levels of complex relationships between any category and the lexical item contained in it. It avoids redundancy by copying the name and features of the lexical item to the top of the phrase unlike PS rules. It is endocentric approach improves representational adequacy for all constituents by allotting a head to a phrase and representing it at the maximal level. You can see this figure on your screen which improves the representational adequacy for all constituents and allowing for the appropriate accommodation of all kinds of complex relationships between each constituent of a phrase, clause or a sentence. In addition, the implementation of X bar theory also allows proper solutions for a lot of computational needs that demands the representation of the structural complexity of human language for the purpose of dealing with natural language processing known as NLP. What is the need? We can say that the phrase structure rules were developed to represent noun phrases, verb phrases, adjective phrases and so on. But there was nothing to represent the property of a noun phrase representing whether the noun or the determiner or even an adjective modifying it should be somehow related to the verb in a verb phrase where the relation of semantic roles as well as case has to be built between the verb and one of the categories in the noun phrase. Amount of branching was also not controlled as addition of adverbs, multiple genitive constructions. Several amounts of branching from the topmost phrase at the sentence level representation in PS rules. PS rules also implied that one needs to create different rules each for each type of phrase such as noun phrase, verb phrase, prepositional phrase, etc. as the representation did not distinguish between an integral category in the phrase and the other obligatory or optional categories inside it. This was exocentric in nature. Now the better representation in X bar you can say that the representation of lexical properties of a word at a phrasal level is endocentric in nature in X bar theory. 
those properties are very strategically represented at a compositional level higher than the level of its entry in the structure at the phrasal level. Chomsky in 1970 given this formula on your screen. All phrases are conceptually headed by one head x. The head of the projection is a zero projection. Heads are terminal nodes, they dominate words. X theory distinguishes two further levels of projection. Complements combine with X to form X projections and adjuncts combine with X to form X projections and the specifier combines with the topmost X to form the maximal projection XP. Now this is what I told you that it is a visual representation of X bar schema. There are however limitations to what can be taken as a complement or a specifier by the head depending on whether it is a verb, a noun, a preposition or an adjective and so on. These restrictions are actually explained by other modules of government and binding such as case theory, theta criteria and so on besides several choice based restrictions upon the head such as L selection, S selection and C selection and are however not an integral part of the X bar module itself. A specifier popularly known as a spec is the sister node to X and together form XP. The complement YP is also a sister to the head X. The adjunct ZP can combine with only an X to form X again. The bars can also be understood as a projection of the properties of X. X's are all intermediate projections of X and X or XP is the maximal projection of X. There can be several intermediate projections of X in the form of X1. What are the advantages of the schema? Of course, it helps accommodate several complements of X such as double object constructions for giving which must take two objects, the direct object, the book and the recipient him for the book in John gave him the book. See this tree diagram to understand it in a better way. It helps accommodate several additions of adjuncts or extra information to the verb which may not be integral to or necessary for the comprehension of the given expression. You know that adjuncts are like that and they can be added to the series as well as is evident from the tree bar on your screen. There are salient features of the X bar theory and we must discuss them like the X format allows us to bring out the commonality between the different types of phrases. The traditional phrase structure rules for specific phrases for example verb phrase etc are reduced to more elementary notions. The hierarchical organization of the phrase is captured by X1 theory. The X schema can be extended to the clausal constituents. S is reinterpreted as a projection of INFL and S1 is reinterpreted as a projection of C. The category with which the other lexical categories in the phrase are related in such a way that the head bears the essence of the meaning of that phrase. The word that determines the syntactic type of a phrase heads are the always terminal nodes in a phrase below which the lexical insertion takes place. For example, the head of hot tea is tea, where tea is a noun and the phrase is considered as a noun phrase. Hot, however, is an adjective and does not get to categorize the phrase as an adjective phrase. A complement phrase YP can be the sister of the terminal head node. To constitute an intermediate projection, complements are those words which the head can get to choose according to its lexical selection, constituent selection and semantic selection requirements. 
द आर्ग्यूमेंट्स विच बिकम द एनवायरमेंट इन विच द हेड कैन अकर एज अ चंक आर्ग्यूमेंट्स ऑफ द हेड एंड नेसेसरी टू कंप्लीट द मीनिंग ऑफ अ गिवन एक्सप्रेशन एंड हेल्प कंप्लीट द मीनिंग ऑफ अ फ्रेज द ऑब्जेक्ट सैम ऑफ अ वर्ब हिट इज कंसिडर इट्स कॉम्प्लीमेंट इन जॉन हिट सैम The noun phrase the table inside a preposition phrase on the table is a complement of the preposition on so complements are sister note to xo under which the actual lex lexical insertion of a word takes place please watch this video to understand x bar theory in a better way if you have any confusion i hope that your confusion get cleared after watching this video and then we'll proceed further with the various component and other salient features of x bar theory what i want to do in this clip is give a quick overview of some of the foundational concepts of the standard generative theory of phrase structure with a view to justifying the following basic assumptions first all kinds of phrases are structured around lexical categories such as noun verb preposition and determiner and such notions as head complement and adjunct second there's a single structural shell or template for all types of phrases such that heads complements and adjuncts appear systematically in the same kinds of slots all over the language And third, there are grammatical phenomena such as anaphora, ellipsis, and emphatic focus that operate in terms of the theoretical constructs at play in this kind of structural shell. With this in mind, I'll review and expand a little on the basic structure of noun phrases and then show how and why this same structure works for verb phrases. Let's start out by going down to the level of a typical word around which a complex phrase can be built. The word student contains a suffix that in Latin created a participial stem from a bound verb root. In English, this suffix has the effect of turning an allomorph of the verb root study into a noun. And like with the verb study, the meaning of student is such that the concept of a subject matter that is engaged with in the studying scenario can be expressed by a word or phrase in a specific slot if it is a single word such as psychology this slot is on the immediate left of student as in the case of psychology student otherwise it's in a prepositional phrase headed by of on the immediate right as in the case of student of psychology Psychology student is a phrase of a kind that we call n bar. Complements can be identified in the structure by the fact that they are always found right next to a head in an n bar, p bar, or some other bar level phrasal container. This n bar has the potential to combine with any number of adjunct modifiers. For example, we can add a word such as smart to specify an incidental attribute of a particular individual that we want to identify. As an adjective, smart designates a property of individuals that can be present to varying degrees, and because of this can be modified by a word such as really, which specifies a high degree on an imagined scale of smartness. By virtue of modifying the adjective smart, really is an adjunct in a larger containing phrase that has smart as its head the structural signature of adjuncts is that they always combine with a bar type phrase to create another enclosing bar type phrase of the same category therefore the adjective smart is enclosed in an a bar shell so that it can combine with really inside another encompassing a bar shell This then is enclosed in an adjective phrase or AP. Now because this whole AP is in the same kind of modifying adjunct relationship with psychology student, it joins with it in a larger n bar phrase. And of course, other modifying phrases can be adjoined to this n bar. 
For example, we can adjoin a prepositional phrase to the right to indicate a place that we associate with the student in question. The end bar formed by this adjunction, which encompasses the entire string of words, really smart psychology student from my high school, can be considered a complete noun phrase, or NP, for which reason it is enclosed in a shell labeled NP. This NP now needs a grammatical word at the highest level to create an overall phrase of a kind that can function as a subject of a clause or a complement of a verb or preposition. This is the function of determiners. So one option is to add a compatible demonstrative determiner. Because it takes a complement headed by a singular noun, the word this can be used. Because the signature of this head complement relation is containment in a bar level shell, we enclose it in a D bar before wrapping a DP container around the whole structure. The whole structure is consistent with our understanding of containment and constituency, both in the physical world and in language. Each of the units identified as a phrase is a complete piece that is part or member of a larger containing phrase. And we know what the containers and their contents are because of how they function in the grammar. For example, really smart psychology student from my high school, which is the entire complement of this, is identifiable as a constituent because it can be related to the pronoun one, whose function is to identify nominal phrases in the prior discourse that we don't repeat in order to keep our communication concise. Besides identifying whole NPs, one can be used in this anaphoric way to also identify n-bar constituents. In this same structure, for example, it can identify really smart psychology student as well as psychology student. We also have evidence that psychology is a complement of student. This is so because the model has psychology and the head of the NP student forming an n-bar together. Because of this, student is not itself an NP or an n-bar and therefore cannot be identified by the pronoun one. And the general rule is that one needs to get its value from a phrasal constituent of category N, either NP or N bar. Now, we can see that verb phrases or VPs have the same kind of shell structure by examining a complex VP built around the verb study. Let's go from the top down this time into the phrase, very often study my psychology notes on the bus. This can be decomposed into the adjunct modifier of the whole VP, very often, and a subphrase of category V bar, consisting of the rest of the whole thing. Because it is typically a verb modifier and doesn't function as a complement, often is best analyzed as an adverb. It forms a constituent with the degree adverb vary, which like all adjunct modifiers, combines with a bar level phrase to a specifier spec can be the sister to the intermediate projection x1 to combine into a constituent of the maximal projection xp a specifier is a word added at the xp or x level as its sister node the determiners such as the have been considered as a specifier of a phrase Modifiers of noun phrase have been given the position of a specifier. For example, the subject of a sentence is always given the position of a specifier. An adjunct YP can be sister to only an intermediate node and never with any other node to form an intermediate node X. Adjunct is an extra information as is not necessarily integral to the basis comprehension of the given expression. For example, in the earlier example, the propositional phrase in the library, etc. can be done away with 
and still the basic meaning of give can be completely understood solely with the objects beside it earlier s was the head of the whole sentence but now infliction became the head of the whole sentence s the subordinate clause beginning with that was converted to cp or complement phrase with a c head this would have an inflection phrase or ip as a complement and the sentence representation would follow the following comparison will make things clear through this diagram you can understand the categorical representation with x bar according to ps rules the tree on the left depicts the whole sentence having its representation by an arbitrary symbolic representation of s and the embedded clause mary loves ice cream has s as the head the tree on the right uses x schema to represent the inf as the essence of the matrix clause and represents it in an endocentric approach at the maximal level of the sentence the embedded clause is represented as a complement phrase with the comp that as the head further within the complement phrase is the ip representing a full sentence again with inflection as the essence of representation at the maximum level you can see the categorical representation with x bar the spec position of cp is however left unoccupied and provides a site for transformational requirements such as wh movement in case the object of love is what where the it can move out of the noun phrase posing leaving a trace the subscript indicates the identity of the trace and the spec what as being the same x bar theory was first proposed by noam chomsky in 1970 it was built on the approach to categorize zelig harris 1951 it is an attempt to also represent the psychological level of representation of the awareness of linguistic units in our mind to a great extent also incorporated into both transformational and non transformational theories of syntax including gb gpsg lfg and hpsg the development of minimalist program has largely abandoned x bar theory and adopted the approaches of bare phrase structure hope you have gone through x bar theory and could understand its value in linguistics now once again i am going to show you another video that will just make your concept clear regarding x bar theory which was propounded by chomsky in 1970 when you will understand this x bar theory in a proper way i am sure your concept regarding theories of linguistics will have another dimension so let's talk about trees but not the kind with flowers or fruit or leaves No, I mean the trees that underlie our sentences, the ones that build up the structure that our words slot into and let us build bigger meanings. Every time you build a sentence, every time someone talks to you, you're growing one of these trees. All I've just been saying has planted a little grove of language in your mind. So let's do some climbing. I'm Moti Lieberman and this is the Ling Space. Welcome to the Ling Space. There's a whole branch of linguistics that's devoted to looking at the structure of sentences, known as syntax. But why do we even bother? Can't we just stack our words one on top of another like pancakes to make some delicious meanings? Well, there has to be some structure or else we'd be able to work back from a smashed up wreck of a sentence like a threatening hand is to angel missing lawyer that is and have it get the same meaning as the original. The lawyer who is missing a hand is threatening angel. Clearly, one of those is a good sentence of English and the other one is just gibberish that happens to be made up of English words. So, structure must matter. But what kind of structure do we need? Well, whatever hypothesis we come up with, it's got to be really flexible. That's because it has to capture all the variation in how all the different languages in the world put together all their different sentences. 
We don't want to say Icelandic speakers have one basic way of making sentences, but Telugu speakers have a second one, and Cree speakers a third. Building sentences with their own internal structures is something common to every language of the world. And so an Icelandic baby dropped off in southeastern India will learn Telugu syntax just fine. That's because the basic framework of syntax is universal. In fact, it's part of universal grammar, the linguistic knowledge all people share. But with all the surface differences, finding something that can branch its way through every human language isn't obvious. Not only does it have to be flexible, it also has to be abstract. So there are a lot of hypotheses out there, but one of the most commonly talked about ones is called X-bar theory, first proposed in the early 70s. The X in X-bar doesn't stand for anything. It's a variable, like in algebra. We can use that variable to make a basic structure, a template, like this. X can stand for any noun, or verb, or adjective, or any category you want to build a phrase around. You end up with chunks of syntax that can be stacked and connected together. And we do it in a way that's flexible enough to communicate anything that you want in any language that you want. This gets a lot clearer when you start looking at some examples. Let's start with something really simple. A name, like Cordelia. Okay, so in your mental lexicon, where you store all your words, each term belongs to a syntactic category, which is like a part of speech, so a noun, an adverb, etc. Cordelia is a noun, so when we want to put Cordelia in our x-bar tree, we replace the x's with n's for nouns. In this phrase, Cordelia is the head, which is the part of the phrase with the most content and meaning. Because Cordelia is the head of the phrase, and because it's a noun, the whole thing will become a noun phrase, or np. Great! Done. Except not really. This might work if we'd never said anything more than bare nouns and verbs and things, but natural language is a lot more involved than that. So sometimes all you want to say is Cordelia, but sometimes you might want to say nice things about Cordelia. Maybe you want to say the amazing Cordelia. Where do those other words fit in? Well, that's where the bar part of x-bar theory comes to the rescue. So between the head and phrase level, we introduce one more layer of complexity. That's the bar level, which is written with an apostrophe next to the letter that represents the head. The bar level is an intermediate, repeatable stage in the template that allows us all the flexibility we need to build bigger phrases and sentences. Let's see how this works. Since they're all still associated with the noun, they're all to do with Cordelia, you need to have extra room for them in your noun phrase. So they need to get nestled into the NP, and that's where the N bar comes in. Now your sentence is shaping up. But wait, why bother having these intermediate stages at all? Even if we know all these words come together to make up a noun phrase, why put in all these extra levels of structure? Why not just put in an NP at the top, and then different labels for all the words below? So an N for the noun, an A for the adjective, etc. That'd be easier, right? Well, here's the thing. The reason we needed syntax in the first place was to give structure to how come sentences mean what they do and have the word order that they do. All the information about what a sentence means, that is the syntax. And it has to be visible in our diagrams, or else why bother drawing trees in the first place, right? So we end up needing to branch things off two by two with bar levels. Otherwise, we wouldn't know what parts go with other parts. We can even put as many bar levels into the structure as we want, so it'll work with any kind of sentence. For example, if we said the quirky, supremely intelligent Fred, and there was no internal structure, so everything was just flat, we wouldn't know that supremely was supposed to go with intelligent and not with quirky. We wouldn't be able to come up with any rules to stop these things. All the rules, everything that's okay and not okay, has to be seen in the structure. The bar levels give us a hierarchy that allows us to make sense of things like this. Now we know supremely goes with intelligent, and that you can't just pull words out willy-nilly to make nonsense sentences. What x-bar theory shows us is the way that we can build structure in order to capture all the facts of language, along with the flexibility to add whatever we like. They let us add potentially infinite parts before the head, like the bespectacled bookish Brit Wesley, or after the head, as in the vampire with a soul and a big black coat. And this sort of syntax also lets us capture facts about how we form larger sentences, ask questions, find ambiguity, and all sorts of other things, which we'll talk about in the future. Linguists today have a lot of other hypotheses about syntax too, but x-bar is a great place to start because it shows all of the hallmarks of why syntax is real and useful. 
It can be applied to any type of word, in any type of sentence, in any type of language. It's just a template, a head with the phrase in as many intermediate stages as you'd like. But by using that one little template and putting it in every time you make a phrase, you can shape a whole world of language. Shaping those little trees can tell you what language is, and that's worth the climb. So we've reached the end of the Ling space for this week. But if you were making your own happy little trees, you learned that sentences must have an internal structure to them if we're going to capture the facts we know about them, that the basic template of that structure needs to be flexible and universal, that the template in X-bar theory consists of a head, a phrase, and as many bar levels as you need to fit all the words you have, and that structure should branch off two by two to fit the facts about hierarchy that we feel are true. Thank you for visiting EPG Paatshala.